Welcome back to another lesson on nonlinear dynamics. In this video, we're going to expand our learning to two dimensional dynamical systems, starting with linear systems. We'll go to nonlinear systems later on in this series. Now, compared to a one dimensional dynamical system, a two dimensional system will consist of two functions, x of t and y of t, with a differential equation describing the rate of change of each of those functions. In general, both of these differential equations will be functions of x and y. If I've got a linear two-dimensional dynamical system, then the functions f and g will be linear in x and y, so there won't be any x squared, y squared, etc. terms, it'll just be x and y. And in general, because f and g have to be linear functions in x and y for me to have a linear dynamical system, we can write any linear dynamical system as dx by dt equals a linear combination of x and y, with a and b as their respective coefficients, and as dy by dt equals another linear combination of x and y, this time with c and d as their respective coefficients. If you wanted to write this in matrix form, you could write this as follows, with a column vector denoting the derivatives on the left, a column vector on the right denoting the functions x and y, and a coefficient matrix with the elements a, b, c, and b. I can label the derivative vector as x dot with an arrow over it, the coefficient matrix as capital A, and the function vector as x with an arrow over it. If I do that, I end up with the following matrix equation for my linear dynamical system. I'll call this equation 1. Now this linear dynamical system has two properties. The first is that the origin, where both x and y are zero, the first is that the origin is a fixed point. And you can see this pretty easily. If I plug in x equals zero and y equals zero into equation one, then when the matrix A multiplies the zero vector, I end up with both of my derivatives becoming zero. And when both of my derivatives become zero, my linear system x and y is not going anywhere, its rate of change is zero. And because it's not going anywhere, the system is fixed, so x equals zero and y equals zero is then a fixed point. The second property I'll talk about is that if the function vectors x1 and x2 are each solutions to my linear dynamical system, then their linear combination c1 x1 plus c2 x2, where c1 and c2 are constants, this linear combination must also be a solution. Now because x1 and x2 are individually solutions to our linear dynamical system, these two equations hold, where the derivative of x1 equals a times x1 and the derivative of x2 in time equals a times x2. And now if I plug in c1x1 plus c2x2 into equation 1, this is what I get. If I distribute the matrix a over the summation, I end up with the following. I'll move the constants outside the a to get this more neatly packaged expression. Now a times x1 is just the derivative of x1 with respect to time, and a times x2 is just the derivative of x2 with respect to time. After all, as we stated earlier, x1 and x2 are solutions of the dynamical system in equation 1. If we make those substitutions, we'll end up with this equation. And because the derivative is also a linear operator, whereby the derivative of a constant times a function is the constant times the derivative, and the derivative of the sum of two functions is the sum of the derivatives, this expression on the right can be expressed as the derivative of the original linear combination function. So that means that the linear combination of the solutions x1 and x2 also satisfies the equation for our dynamical system, which basically confirms property 2. You can additionally verify that if I added a constant term to my differential equations that both properties 1 and 2 would no longer be satisfied, so our dynamical system would no longer be linear. So we cannot even allow constant terms to enter our 2D linear dynamical system because then it would no longer follow the usual properties of a linear system. Let's now go through an example of a linear dynamical system and illustrate some important concepts, particularly those involving two-dimensional phase portraits, which I'll get to in the next video. We'll consider these two differential equations, where the derivative of x in time is some real constant a times x, and the derivative of y in time is negative y. Of course, if you write this linear dynamical system in matrix form, this is what you get. Now this system is what we call an uncoupled system, that is the derivative of x only depends on x, it doesn't depend on y. Additionally, the derivative of y only depends on y, it doesn't depend on x. You can also tell that a linear dynamical system is uncoupled by looking at its matrix. Here you can see that the coefficient matrix only has diagonal elements. The off-diagonal elements are both zero. This suggests an uncoupled dynamical system. 
The other thing to note here is that the fixed point of this dynamical system is, again, the origin. Why? Well, because when both x and y are 0, the derivatives of x and y are 0, and so 0, 0 is a fixed point, which is in keeping with our first property that we discussed earlier. Now normally when we analyze a dynamical system we only end up looking at the differential equations and playing around with them to determine the behavior of our system. We don't usually solve the differential equations themselves because sometimes they're really difficult to solve, especially for nonlinear systems. But the nice thing about this example is that we can actually solve these two equations and make our analysis easier. When we solve the first equation, the dx by dt, using separation of variables, we find that x becomes a constant times the exponential of a times t. This initial constant I've called x0 because when t is 0, x is x0, so x0 just denotes my initial value of x. We can use the exact same technique to solve for y as a function of time, in which case we get y0 times the exponential of negative t, where y0, just like x0, is the initial value of y. So now that I've solved my uncoupled linear system, I'm in a position to analyze the solutions for different starting values of x and y, different initial conditions. I didn't need to solve the system to analyze the solutions, but solving it will help put things into context when we look at the phase portraits of the system for different values of a. And because that analysis is going to take some time and will require me to speak in detail about ideas like asymptotic versus Lyapunov stability, fixed points, manifolds, etc., I'm going to use the next video to perform that analysis as opposed to cramming everything in here. I'd like to thank the following patrons for their support, and if you enjoyed the lesson, feel free to like and subscribe. This is the Faculty of Khan signing out.